SC360. Today, we are taking a closer look at Sri Lanka's debt landscape, a critical factor influencing the nation's economic trajectory. Let's take a look at the current status of the country's debt. According to CBSL data, Sri Lanka carries a significant debt burden totaling 28.02 trillion rupees as of September 2023 with a debt to GDP ratio standing at 101%. 59% of this debt amounting to 16.62 trillion rupees is domestic while the remaining 41% accounts for foreign debt totaling 11.4 trillion rupees. These figures shed light on the complexities of Sri Lanka's financial landscapes. The foreign debt figures comprises debts that were owed to various multilateral and bilateral parties as well as private creditors. As of end of September 2023, Sri Lanka owed 3.52 trillion rupees to various multilateral parties, while to bilateral parties, the country owed 7.89 trillion rupees. Further, to private creditors, the country owes 3.5 trillion rupees in rupee terms. To navigate the country's debt level to a sustainable level, on June 28, 2023, the Government of Central Bank of Sri Lanka presented a cabinet paper outlining guidelines for the domestic debt optimization. The objectives of the DDO include reducing public debt stock, lowering annual financing needs, and managing foreign debt servicing. The plan aims for a primary account surplus equivalent to 2.3% of total GDP. Strategies include converting the Central Bank's treasury bills to treasury bonds, restructuring superannuation funds holdings, and offering options for Sri Lanka development bonds and foreign currency term financing facilities. The DDO is expected to significantly impact the CBSL with potential recapitalization of the entity being required, whereas superannuation funds to be somewhat impacted based on participation. To address Sri Lanka's request for debt treatment with regard to foreign debt, a formal creditor committee comprising 17 nations with India, Japan and France serving as the co-chairs was established. In November last year, Sri Lanka entered into an agreement with the official creditor committee on the treatment of $5.9 billion outstanding debt. While the agreement in principle entails a combination of extending long-term maturities and reducing interest rates. Meanwhile, the IMF, in their second review of the Extended Fund Facility Agreement, noted that Sri Lanka's agreement in principle with the Official Creditor Committee and the Export-Import Bank of China on debt treatment are consistent with the program's parameters, which are important milestones in putting Sri Lanka's debt on the path towards sustainability. Post successful conclusion of the second review of the four year extended fund facility, Sri Lanka has access to about 337 million US dollars in financing, bringing the total IMF financial support dispersed to 1 billion US dollars out of the total 3 billion US dollar bail. Whilst the macroeconomic policy reforms are beginning to yield positive results, the IMF team emphasized the further reforms and addressing governance issues are crucial for lasting recovery and growth of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has about 4.2 billion US dollars in bilateral debt and 2.9 billion US dollars in commercial debt outstanding to China. China, as Sri Lanka's largest bilateral creditor, has expressed its willingness to discuss debt restructuring with Sri Lanka while also further expanding direct investments in the country. During the high-level bilateral talks recently held in Beijing, the Chinese Prime Minister reassured China's continuous support in Sri Lanka's debt restructuring efforts and economic developments. India had provided Sri Lanka with financial assistance totaling more than 4 billion US dollars to support its economic recovery. This assistance from India comprised credit lines, a currency swap agreement, and postport import payments. Meanwhile, the Indian government is working on operationalizing rupee investments in Sri Lanka in a move to boost Indian investments. These rupee investments are expected to ease the way for Indian firms to enter the Sri Lankan market while reducing the country's dependency on the US dollar. As an initial step, the CBSL had made the Indian rupee a designated foreign currency, enabling Sri Lankans and Indians to use the Indian rupee instead of the US dollar for international transactions with each other. Now, let's look at the country's debt owed to private creditors. The government of Sri Lanka currently has reached agreements with bilateral creditors such as India, China and Paris Club along with other debt holders to restructure its debt. And as a result of the recent negotiations with the bondholders steering committee, the Treasury announced last week the initiation of US dollar denominated international sovereign bonds exchange offer. This significant milestone aims to restructure $12.1 billion of ISBs out of the total $22 billion external 
that that the country bears. The Treasury issued a request for proposals notice to appoint a dealer manager tasked with executing the ISP's exchange offer transactions and its other related activities. As we can see, the Sri Lankan government so far has taken many progressive steps to bring the country's debt to a level of sustainability. Yet, there are challenges ahead with managing debt responsibly, fostering international partnerships and implementing effective reforms, as there are crucial steps toward ensuring economic resilience and prosperity in the future. Keep watching SC360 for more insightful content. Thank you for watching.